Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're starting a brand new series called Chinese Civilization. The series sets out to illustrate the evolution of Chinese civilization through an investigation of archaeological discoveries, historical sites, and cultural relics. And in the course of this, it will reflect the enduring desire for self-improvement and social commitment that are a feature of the Chinese nation. In today's program, we'll be going back to the dawn of Chinese civilization. 5,000 years ago, the Yellow River gave birth to Yan Di, the Yan Emperor, and Huang Di, the Yellow Emperor. It was then that people here first started to call themselves Chinese. Beginning from 5,000 years ago, when the Yellow River gave birth to Yan Di, or the Yan Emperor, and Huang Di, the Yellow Emperor, the two greatest heroes in Chinese antiquity, people in this land started to call themselves Chinese. With the seeds of civilization planted 10,000 years ago sprouting, growing, and blooming in the central plain, the development of Chinese culture was gathering momentum. A great nation was about to be born. In the year 91 BC, the great Han dynasty historian Sima Qian finally finished his great book, Records of the Historian, a work that begins with the legendary figure Huang Di. But are there any tangible facts to prove that this hero and his people even existed in ancient antiquity? Sumachen 那么,从五地本地本身,我们就可以看到,它所描述的皇帝这个时期,实际上是中国文明的一个形成,开始形成的一个时期。Yangshao is a deserted village in Mianchu County, Hunan Province, located on the southern bank of the Yellow River. And towards it, zigzags an equally deserted road. Before long, these dilapidated walls, the remains of dwellings that date back to ancient antiquity, will disappear, leaving only the village's name to be remembered. The first significant clue about the identity of this place was discovered by Swedish geologist Johan Andersson. In 1921, Andersson made a second visit to the area around Yangshao in the hope of finding fossils of vertebrate animals, but instead, he noticed certain unusual soil strata from which he and his scientist associates unearthed a pile of stone tools and pieces of pottery. Anderson wondered whether these dark objects, some of which bore colored patterns, dated back to prehistoric times. Later, other discoveries of a similar nature unearthed from the southern bank of the Yellow River confirmed that they were, and Addison named the prehistoric culture he had discovered Yangshao culture.
After comparing the finds from Yang Shao culture with ancient color pottery from Central Asia and Europe, Addison noticed that there were many similarities. Perhaps, he considered, they all shared the same birthplace. But if so, where was that birthplace? Perhaps this culture had been born in the West and had later spread to China. Did Chinese culture originate in China's west and later move eastward? To answer this question, a number of Chinese scholars turned their eyes to Shandong province in China's central plain, hoping to locate the roots of Chinese civilization, a civilization native to Shandong, neither foreign nor from China's west. In 1928, 27-year-old Wu Jinding climbed a tall ancient wall in the town of Longshan, called by his friend a town of geese and ducks. Perhaps Wu Jinding wondered, this area had needed a town for geese and ducks in ancient times and was somehow related to ancient history. In the grey earthen stratum in a cliff in Longshan, he found some pieces of shiny glazed pottery, all a very dark black. Not long after, two teams headed by Li Ji and Liang Suyong carried out separate archaeological investigations, and what they found revealed a mysterious culture never before known. This previously unknown culture was characterized by shiny black pottery objects that were entirely different from the type found in Yang Shao, and so they named this culture Longshan culture. The discovery shocked the established belief that Chinese culture had come from China's western regions, and suggested instead that it had been based on the central plain. In 1934, Li Ji and Liang Suyong's findings were published in a book titled Cheng Ziya, the first archaeological field report ever published in China. The defining characteristic of Longshan culture is its finely crafted black pottery, and so for a long time all prehistoric cultural relics found wherever black pottery was present were regarded as belonging to Longshan culture. The pottery craftsmanship required to make these black pottery items was indeed impressive. For instance, among the pottery objects found was this amazing black pottery cup. It weighs just 50 grams, is one millimeter thick at the thickest point, and astonishingly is just 0.3 millimeters thick at the thinnest thinner than an eggshell. This type of pottery is thus called eggshell pottery, and even making it today is unimaginable to contemporary pottery craftsmen. Archaeologists have determined that Longshan culture dates back to 4,000 to 4,600 years ago. But where did this culture come from, and what was the parent culture? The significance of the discovery of Longshan culture was that it put pay to the established belief that Chinese civilization had come from the West. Instead, it seemed to have originated on the central plain. In 1959, a site was discovered with more than a hundred ancient tombs dating back 6,000 years. This previously unknown ancient culture was given the name Da Wenko. When construction began on a two-way line for the beijing Pukou Railway in 1959, more than a hundred ancient tombs were brought to light. Their occupants had remained buried undisturbed for 6,000 years. The discovery revealed that some 6,500 years ago, people living around Mount Tai had created a brilliant oriental culture. This newly discovered ancient culture was given the name Darwinco culture. Everything found in the tomb suggested that 5,700 years ago, the established family structure was built around monogamy, as after death, the husband and wife had been buried together 
in the same tomb. It was also clear that equality inside the clan had been abandoned. Inside the tombs of the rich were large numbers of beautifully crafted pottery objects, while inside those of the poor were just a few coarsely made objects. Archaeologists were puzzled by a particular kind of mysterious burial object found in these tombs that looked rather like a modern-day gun shell. Some scholars felt it likely that the patterns carved on these were China's earliest written language. Others concluded that one of the patterns meant sunrise from the east. It was clear that the eastern part of China around Mount Tai had seen the flourishing of a culture that was quite different from that in Yangshao. That being the case then, where had Yangshao culture come from? Legend has it that Huang Di was the leader of a great tribe called the Cathay, while Yan Di, who was Huang Di's cousin, was the leader of another great tribe. Both came from the Weishui River area in China's west. The source of Yang Xiao culture had been found at the foot of Mount Hua, a mountain in China's west, and at Mount Tai in China's east. Somehow, the two sites seemed to form a mysterious balance. Both were the cradle of Chinese civilization. About 6,700 years ago, a branch of Yang Xiao people came to the foot of Mount Hua and there made their home. Today, this place is called Banpo. In 1954, the mysterious Ban